Do I have grass pizza? I've had grass without the pizza, you know. I, I, I definitely have the grass part, you know. I mean, or, or carrots. I love carrots. Do you like carrots? I hate carrots. You hate carrots? I don't know if we can be friends. I don't know. I mean, you know, if, if you don't like carrots, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you now we can totally be friends. I want to be your friend. Is that cool? <laughs> Where are the ladybugs? I have no idea. Where, where are the ladybugs? No, what are? They're insects. No, uh, they're jelly beans. Oh, really? Wow. Well, I, I, I'm never going to try to eat one of those then. All right, bye, buddy. Have a wonderful day. All right, let's see. Who else is over there? Let's.
Look. I realized how gorilla gorilla is like. It's impolite to stare. Yeah, okay, this is how I do it. Like <laughs> Frank's grandma Ooh, keeps a little profile, but his quiet manner is oh, almost 50. Hey, up that. Oh, 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 no. You know what? Come back out. This is back. 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 Traits, physical traits, all of which they use to not only beat the heat, but also 
out in the wild, they don't have to worry about predators. And sometimes out in the wild, resources like food, water, and shelter are scarce. And we'll see the many ways our animals deal with overcoming those obstacles. We're going to see some similarities today and some pretty big differences, some unique traits out here. And I'll point those out to you as we go. Also give us a chance on tour to talk about some of our conservation projects here at the Safari Park. And just by being here, you are helping us out in a great way, helping us save endangered species across the globe. Appreciate you all coming out, spending your day out here at the Safari Park. We're working on areas like our Nikita Khan Rhino Rescue Center on the passenger side. And where I don't see a rhino in this yard, they might be working with our wildlife care specialist off of the yard. I do want to point out, here's the Rhino Rescue Center. We house southern white rhinos, and we're trying to learn more about their social behavior, the reproductive system, and anything we can take. All the research we can grab to help southern white rhino and many other rhinos across the globe who need our help. But we want to do so much research on rhinos. Also helps have you all here today. Appreciate you all coming out. They're not only going to see endangered species on the floor today, on the driver's side, you can see a large white bird or a great white pelican. Not necessarily a danger, but we're happy to have them here at the Safari Park. That was a photo. <laughs> the great white pelican. Mm -hmm. Got that all white of their feathers. They did copy our greater flamingo here. Going to use that to reflect the sun's rays, stay cool. But you might notice between our great white pelican and greater flamingo, being all white with your feathers is not great camouflage. It's pretty easy to spot that. But that is a sacrifice they're willing to make because they have to stay cool out there and, of course, being a bird, they have to get the flight when threatened by a predator. All they can do, all they have to do really, is spread those wings and avoid that confrontation. But we're going to talk a lot about mammals today as well. And the mammals we're going to see native to Africa, they don't have wings like our birds here. They do have to consider things like camouflage, and we'll see the variety of ways they use that. Some are better than others, so keep your eyes peeled. Of course, any effective camouflage that works well can be harder for us to spot them. Be on the lookout. Now, of course, large habitat. Great for the animals. We're very proud of that here at the Safari Park. Still a large part of our success. Just due to the fact that we have this large area out here. Animals are a lot happier when they have the space to roam around. And so we're very successful with our breeding program because of the, all this space. But there is one downside for all this. There's a lot of area for the animal to hide. Take a break, have some privacy with these tramps, so you're going to notice. Habitats like the one on the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Tough to see some of our animals. We do have some Nile lechway close to the fence line, water buck under the tree, zebra at times, the very back on the top of the hill. Not very photogenic, but it's okay though because we feel that when our animals have this option, when they have the choice to hide from us, they're a lot happier. We feel that plays a large role in all of our success here at the park. And where one animal isn't very photogenic, there's usually another around the corner who wants to come out to say hello. So you can see, sometimes they don't want to be around the tram, and sometimes sprinklers go off, scare away all the birds. There's a lot of birds in this habitat, they might be tough to see though. Many vultures as well. The cave vulture hiding towards the fence line. Under a shady tree, there's a lack of face vulture down in the water, taking a bath. Sometimes we have to work really hard to spot our animals. It's some pretty good practice. You can spot those vultures. The cave vulture is very close to the fence line in the back. All white feathers with black on the tail feather. And the lapis face vulture is all black with a red face. I have to stand up for that one. Even the water, the feathers are all wet from the sprinklers. Good time for a bath, just like our greater flamingo. Animals have to cool off in a wide variety of ways. Of course, vultures are very important to the ecosystem as well. They feed on carrion. That's dead and decaying organic matter. 
something we're not interested in, but we're very appreciative to take a critical role in the ecosystem, cleaning up, helping prevent the spread of bacteria. It's a very unique diet. Any species we're going to see today, they prefer grass, they're grazers, or leaves up in the tree, like our sunring gazelle. They are browsers on the passenger side, some of them sitting out. Somewhere under the palms as well, out in the shade. Now, Samarin Gazelle, one of the many antelope we're going to see today. And if you can get a good look at their coat coloration, notice two colors there. White on their belly. Probably already know where I'm going to go with this. And use it to stay cool, right? But they have the tan coat on top. That's going to help out with camouflage, blend in with those tan grasses, sand, and dirt to their environment. Our summering gazelle have a good 50 50 split here, cooling off on their belly but staying invisible to predators in the top coat. But of course, here's the safari park they have nothing to really worry about are cheetahs and lions, or carnivores of Africa. They would love to feed on some of the meat out here, but they have their own separate areas. We're not going to mix the two. But many of the animals out here, like our sable antelope on the driver's side, they don't know that. They think predators are right around the corner. And that's a good thing, because we see a lot more natural behaviors, and this gives our animals great practice. But if they were to be re-released back into the wild, they would have some pretty good practice of being alert to their surroundings. So many antelope you're going to see while sitting about, they got their head up, their stable antelope. Some of adult females there, about 40 inch long horns that curve back. But they do have some babies they have to look out for as well. You might see some tan coats down there with shorter horns. There's some young calves still growing up. We're going to stick close to the mom. It's going to be the safest place for them out in the wild. Sable antelope as well. If you can get a good look at their face, they got some pretty good makeup. But of course, it's not really makeup. It's called the threat mask, that black and white coloration on their face. And that'll help them spot predators because that black mark under their eye, you might have seen this before if you ever watch professional baseball, football, athletes put black marks under their eyes to give them a better view of the playing field. The same thing here with our sable antelope. That black mark is going to reduce glare, help you spot predators much easier. And right next to the tail end boat, you might have already spotted, just past the dirt road under a shady tree, you might see some spring box. We look a lot like summer and gazelle with the orange coat on top, some white bellies over there. But, spring box are a little smaller, they only weigh upwards of 90 pounds, one of the smaller antelope out here. But it's not all about size, of course. Our springbok are one of the fastest animals you're going to see. They run upwards of 55 miles an hour. But it's not all about top speed, of course. They're very agile. They've got great stamina. And sometimes during a the chase, they'll actually leap into the air. It's called cronking. And when they cronk up into the air, it can confuse the predator that's chasing them. Won't be ready for it. And they can extend the gap and get back to the rest of the herd safely back under that shady tree. Many more antelope up ahead. Looks like we have our hen fox. Another great set of horns like the sable antelope. But these horns don't curve back, they go straight back. Up on the grassy hillside grazing away. Everyone's loving the grass right now, even with giraffe up ahead, who normally favors those leaves up in the tree, but looks like grass is on the menu right now. Their second favorite food. But I want to go back to the head box. <laughs> if you notice, they look a little familiar. They have that same black and white threat mask as the single antelope we just saw back there. Not only going to help with their vision, but that mask with that white and black coloration is a great way to silently communicate and send messages to one another. Of course, out in the wild, you don't want to make a lot of noise, so silent communication is very important. You can show the front side of their face, which is all black on their nose, lower those horns, and they can let other members know they're not happy. Sometimes we'll even go down with those horns, you know, spar with one another. Of course, not so much here, there's plenty of grass, but out in the wild, we would have to compete for resources such as grass. And while it's easy for our hemlock, you'll notice our giraffe is struggling a little bit to eat grass. That's why they're not the best grass eaters out here. 
using that 18 foot height to reach up, grab the leaves up in the tree. It looks like we do have some giraffe browsing up ahead, especially in the center here, which is a good bit of sun. Not only using their long neck, but also they have a long tongue as well. You can get a glimpse of it, give you an idea. Notice though, while some of the adults are reaching up to the tree, there's a little one by the trunk of that tree, not quite as tall, not going to be able to reach up there just yet. That little one down there was born less than a year ago. One of our newer 